Hello, uh, my name is Owen Cleary, I'm the chairman of the branch and I'm the candidate for Bedredine. Now, my topic is immigration to talk to you about at the moment. I'm not going to give you a whole host of facts and figures because I think this is something, facts and figures are not important when it comes to immigration, it's just simple common sense. Now, first and foremost, the issue of immigration is not a problem that we can address by blaming immigrants, because immigrants are not to blame for this. The people to blame for the problem are the politicians that have allowed this situation to come about. We can't blame people for wanting to come here if we make it so easy for them to get here. Now, our system at the moment, our immigration system, is discriminatory. It discriminates against people from outside the European Union in favour of people from within the European Union. Now, let me give you an example. I've got family in Australia, and I've got a friend who's got family in India. Now, if our relatives wanted to come and settle in the United Kingdom and ultimately become British, it would take them at least five years because they'd need to pass an application, they'd need to prove that they didn't have any criminal convictions, they'd need to show the skills, English language, they would get a work permit that would last four or five years, and then if they've kept their nose clean, they can apply to full permanent British residency. Mm. Now that is perfectly sensible, that's what most of the world does, and it's what we used to do f for many, many years. But the situation for a migrant from the EU is completely <coughs> different. There are no criminal record checks, there are no skills checks, and there are no English language checks. A migrant from the EU can come to this country and be treated as you or I are in the time it takes to think it and do it. They can think it in the morning, get on a plane in the afternoon and be treated in the same way we are in the evening. Now that is a complete sham. And if we're going to be a progressive country when it comes to immigration, we need to get rid of that discrimination. We can't have discrimination against people purely because of the country they come from or the anthem that their football team, football team sings to. It is, it's utterly <coughs> ridiculous. Now, moving on from that, we must talk about the fact that there is free movement of people within the European Union. Now, when free movement of people started, it did exactly what it said on the tin. It was perfect, because the economies within the EU were equal, the northern European economies. But since we opened up our borders to seven ex-communist states, where the average wage of a professional is less than the minimum wage of somebody here. It's not a surprise that people are coming here in huge numbers, and you can't blame these people for doing it. And I say it again, it is not the fault of the immigrant, it is the fault of our political class that's allowed this situation to happen. They've allowed this to come about. Now, what we propose is a points-based system be uh, extended to all migrants, irrespective of creed, colour, nationality, everybody will be treated the same. And the points-based system will take into account your skills, your benefits to the country, your ability to speak English. And it will get rid of the discrimination to our Commonwealth cousins and people from outside the European Union in favour of a one-size-fits-all, perfectly sensible way of dealing with migrants. You treat them all the same. To me, that seems perfectly sensible. Now, <clears throat> historically, we've been a beacon for migrants from around the world, as, as we all know. I mean, my family came here before the war as migrants. Probably many of you have got uh, ancestors who came to this country. A lot of us have in this, in this country. But immigration is to fill gaps. That's, that is the key thing with immigration. Immigration is to fill gaps, problems that we have. People come to help us. Now, after the Second World War, our Commonwealth came and help, helped us rebuild our country after the war. Now, the, the migrants that came in the 50s and 60s, 60s came in controlled numbers. They shared our culture. They shared our history, and in many cases, they shared our language. They came in controlled numbers, and they have integrated so much better those migrants from two or three generations ago than the migrants that are recently coming into the country, and it's because of the pace and the size of immigration that we have at the moment. Now, you'll hear, um, you'll hear often that, you, you'll sometimes hear it from our opponents that, you know, our NHS is propped up by migrants. Now, that is probably correct. We had huge gaps in our NHS, huge shortage of staff, and it has been filled and filled well by nurses from around the world. But I wonder what message we're sending out when we've got two million unemployed people in this country and we're cherry-picking nurses from Philippines and West Africa. Now, I don't know a lot about the Philippines and I don't know much about West Africa, but I'm certain they need their nurses more than we need them. There's an Ebola crisis in West Africa, and we're picking their nurses and bringing them here. 
We should be training our own nurses. There's two million people that are out of work. We should be training our own nurses and we should be training our own NHS staff. And the same situation comes for agricultural workers. We've got a huge shortage of agricultural workers in this country. It makes sense that we bring in people to do those jobs. But unskilled migration into towns and cities is not the answer. You'll hear our opponents say um, that migrants make a net contribution to our economy. Well, bravo. But that's not a reason to not control the economy, not control migration. It's a ridiculous reason to not control it. If we were able to control the numbers and the quality of migrants, the first thing we would see would be an increase in skills levels. And an increase in skills levels will see an increased earning potential. And QED, increased earning potential, will see an increased tax revenue. More money for the exchequer. It's only by controlling migration that we will make the most of the, mig of the migrants that come to this country. <clears throat> now, we've probably all seen the, uh, the situation that's going on in the Mediterranean. It's a, it's a perfect example of where <clears throat> you need to put things aside and we need to do our bit and we need to help because what's happening is terrible. But we need to look at the root cause of the problem. I mean, I heard said on the news only a couple of days ago that we're going to clamp down on these gang masters and ships, the ship captains and the people traffickers in a bid to stop this. But the people saying that, they're missing the point. That is just a symptom of the problem. The problem is the situation in North Africa and the Middle East. And clamping down on the, the ship captains and these gang masters is all well and good. But it's not going to address the problem that, that causes this, which is the fact that Christians and uh, moderate Muslims don't feel safe in their countries in North Africa and the Middle East. It isn't rocket science to work out that they're going to want to leave there as quick as possible and come to the nearest country that's going to help them. We need to do our bit, but we need to get past this idea of just looking at a symptom. We need to look at the root cause of the problem. The, the Islamic extremism and war, and war and the problems they've got in North Africa is spreading like a cancer. And it's no wonder people are, come, people are terrified and they want to leave. <clears throat> now, this leads me sort of into <coughs> the second part of my speech, which is to do with control. Now, you can't sensibly control your borders as a member of the European Union. We all know that. It was made, it was made clear... Uh, when David Cameron said he was going to renegotiate with the European Union, within a week the European Union president said there is no renegotiation. The next day the German president says there is no renegotiation. So it, 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 is a, it is essentially, it's a straw man to put this argument up and say we're going to do this, vote for us. It's, it's falsehood, it's disingenuous. And we must remember that the best people to decide who comes to our country are us, the British people, represented by a British government that listen to us. Now, last year we had 600,000 migrants come to this country. Now, if we need 600,000 migrants, fantastic. If we can cope with 600,000 migrants, fantastic. If we can feed them all and, hung them and house them all, fantastic. But we can't. And the reason we can't is because the decision to let 600,000 migrants in was made above our heads. It was made by unelected EU commissioners that have made it quite clear. Membership of the European Union is incompatible with controlling your borders. And it doesn't matter who says they're going to renegotiate. It doesn't matter what they say they're going to try and do. Wh whatever arms they say they're going to try and twist at the table in Brussels. It won't happen. It's been made unequivocal. Membership of the European Union is not compatible with controlling your borders. <clears throat> I would like to put a myth to bed. I've heard said by our opponents, when we talk about controlling migration... <clears throat> What about the British expats in the Costa del Sol and the south of France? What about them? Will they send them home? Well, the important thing to remember is that, and I've got relatives that live in the south of France, the, the people that are there are not unskilled workers. For the most part, they're retired workers in receipt of pensions or they have small businesses. They're not a drain on anybody's economy. In fact, they're the sort of person that every country wants. Somebody that doesn't take from the system because they're self-supporting. So the idea that you can bring this up, which, which our opponents will do, they'll bring this up when we talk about controlling migration, is just a complete nonsense. And that myth needs to be put to bed. So it, when, if, if you do talk about these things with people, and they mention that, what about the people in the Costa del Sol? You need to explain it to them. They're irrelevant. This is an, this is an issue about uncontrolled, unskilled migration. And bringing controlled, skilled migrants who are in receipt of pensions and incomes into the equation is an utter waste of time. Now, um, 
Regarding uh, demographics, we must remember that there are parts of this country um, that have changed massively. The demographics of the country, uh, parts of the country, have changed massively as a result of uncontrolled migration. Now, huge numbers in a short space of time <coughs> is never sensible. And I'll go back to what I mentioned about how the migrants who came here in the 50s and 60s. They came in small, controlled numbers, and they are far more integrated. Those migrants who came here two or three generations ago, <coughs> they are far more integrated than many of the recent migrants because the pace and the number of the recent migrants has been too much. We haven't been able to cope with the demand. Now, you can't blame honest working people for feeling uncomfortable when this happens. You can't blame people for that. But in immigration should be seamless. If it's done properly and it's managed and it's controlled, it's seamless. Nobody notices. Nobody has a problem. But when it's done in such huge numbers, we get situations where there are parts of the country where migrants who have come here to better their lives they have essentially ghettoised themselves. There are communities where yeah. migrants don't leave, and it's sad because they should be integrating with the communities around them. And the, the, the sad thing is that breeds resentment between communities. And it's purely down to numbers. Control and manage numbers is what we need. And I, I go back to the, the points-based system that I mentioned at the start. Australia are the most, uh, uh, the, the most well thought of country in the world when it comes to managing immigration. You, you, you pass certain tests, you prove your ability to speak the language, you prove your skills, you can be a benefit to the country, therefore you join. That's how it should work. That's how it's worked for hundreds of years. And if it's good enough for Australians and Brazilians and Americans and South Africans and Indians, then it should be good enough for us. It was for hundreds of years until we opened our borders to ex-communist countries. Now, <clears throat> we, should, we should also remember um, that... And this is a bit of a bugbear of mine. The comment that was made by the Prime Minister six or seven years ago when he said that he would get, uh, well, he wasn't Prime Minister at the time, but he said he would get migration down to tens of thousands. Now, he knew at the time he had no control over that. And this is a real, this is a real point that people should be concerned with. He said that knowing he couldn't control migration. Now, that was a downright lie. That was utterly disingenuous to try and make people believe it's okay. I'll sort it out. And people believed him. And the worst thing about it was, had he told the truth, or had our politicians told the truth, because Clegg and Miliband, they supported him to the hilt on it, because they were trying to win an election as well. Had our politicians told the truth and said, look, immigration's going to be a few hundred thousand, we're going to need to build more schools, we're going to need to build more houses, we're going to need to do X, Y, and Z. Had they had a bit of honesty, they would have had more credit, in my opinion. But most importantly, we would have started building houses in 2010 at 2010 prices. Yeah. Not building them in 2015 at 2015 yeah. prices yeah. at a rate of not. <laughs> and just to conclude, the only aspect of immigration that we can control is immigration from outside the European Union. But that's rocketed as well. Now, let's be clear on this. Our political establishment is united in this respect. There is no desire, no desire to control the thing that most people will say is one of their top priorities. Not immigration, but the pace of immigration and the lack of controls over, over immigration. There is no desire to control this. They're, they're united in this. And I say this to you, you take away the colour of their tie, be they red, blue or yellow, they will all do exactly the same thing. They will say what they need to get your vote. And then they will go ahead and do exactly what the European Union wants the second yeah. they've got their feet on the table. And the final thing I will say is, I'll go back to what I said at the start. This is not the fault of immigrants. This is the fault of the people that have engineered this situation. We have an open door in this country. We can't blame people that are walking through the open door. We can't even blame the open door. The people to blame are the people that open that door without asking everybody else in the house yeah. how they yeah. felt about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And I would, just, I would just finish on this one point. If, you, if there's even one part of you that wants political change in this country, there is only one party to vote for, and that is UKIP. And I urge you to vote for UKIP, not just locally, for candidates like ourselves, but nationally. Because that's the only way that we will ever get change in this country, is by throwing out the old and starting with the new. Thank you. Thank you.